If you love low temp soldering, or maybe like to make your own jewelry components, you're gonna really like this video I have for you today. My name is Laura Beth Love, and I'm a Penguin Random House author and artist, and I'm the author of Boho Chic Jewelry and Soldered Alchemy. And I'm gonna show you how to make these soldered stamped frames. Let's get started. All you really need for this project is low temperature solder and copper wire. Now, you're going to use a heavier gauge wire. So I use 16 gauge. Now, remember, the lower the number, the heavier or thicker the wire is. The higher the number, the thinner the wire. So around 16 gauge is a good place to start. I use a pair of wire straightening pliers to straighten my wire out. And you know, it's not a necessary step, but it is a more professional look when you have, you know, nice smooth edges to your wire, it's easier to work with. So I grab those wire straightening pliers and I just run the wire through them once or twice. Now we're gonna make a shape that we're gonna use for our frame to solder onto. So I'm just gonna eyeball a you know, section of wire. Uh, if it, your wire is a little bit tarnished, you can give it a, a wipe with a green scrub pad or you can use steel wool and that'll get some of the tarnish off. And I cut about three inches of wire. So the next thing we're gonna do is you're gonna shape the wire. I thought I'd make like either in an oval or a teardrop. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna find an object that you can shape your wire around. And here I have my ball peen hammer. So I'm just centering the wire underneath a round part of the hammer so I can get a nice semi-circle curved shape. And that'll be the bottom of my teardrop. I pull the ends up and then pull it off the hammer. And I'm fidgeting with the wire and, and you know, just making sure that it's, you know, the ends are even. And if you have a little bit of one end that's a little long, you can snip it off. And there's our wire all ready to go, that was quick and easy. Now we're going to need to harden the wire, flatten it out a little bit, and I'm gonna use a steel bench block and my ball peen hammer. And I'm just gonna give it a couple whacks, you know, turn it around, watch your fingertips, flip the wire over, do both sides. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make it nice and firm, and it's going to be harder to bend out of shape. Now, if you hammer it too much, you can make it brittle, so be careful. Find that happy medium. So continue to hammer that wire, flip it over, eyeball it, you know, make sure that it's just the way you want it, that it's pretty evenly hammered all around. Um, then you're gonna have to maybe re-bend it a little bit at the top because when you're hammering it, it's gonna kind of separate. So here I push that top back together and that's our finished piece and it's all ready to solder. So let's move over to the soldering station. Here I have a little cup with some liquid flux in it. And you know, flux comes in different forms. As I always say, there's, you know, there's paste flux, there's gel flux. You need to try what you know, different ones and find out what works best for you. I like the liquid flux, so that's what I use. I also use a pair of pliers that I only use for soldering because once you get that liquid flux on there, you know, it's corrosive. So you don't want to use your good jewelry tools for that. So have an old cheap pair of pliers and use those to hold your project. So I'm using a brush and I'm applying flux to all areas of our copper teardrop. Then I'm going to take my soldering iron and I'm using about an 80 watt soldering iron with an attached rheostat. And what that is, is it's just a tool that um, helps control the flow of electricity so you can control your temperature. So here I am refluxing it and then soldering. You're going to solder all edges. Make sure you do the inside, the outside edges, the front, the back, and this is called tinning. So you're going to be putting a, you know, a thin coating of lead-free solder. And I am using a generic lead-free solder. There are different brands. You can try, you know, whatever you like, whatever works best for you. So I'm using, um, again, just a generic lead-free solder. And I'm applying that flux over and over again, because when you put the soldering iron down to it, um, it's going to evaporate. You're gonna see some impurities come out of the metal. Your soldering iron tip might get a little dirty. It's good to have another, I keep another little teacup next to my flux with um, like a paper towel that's damp, and you can just gently 
uh, wipe the tip of your iron on there, but you don't want to do that too often. So once our teardrop is completely tinned, now we're going to use a red rubber stamp and we are going to put globs of solder all around the edges of our teardrop and just, you know, wherever you like them. And then once one is molten hot, you're gonna take your rubber stamp. Again, it has to be a red rubber stamp so it doesn't melt and you're going to press onto it. Now you'll see that I use a little bit of a rocking motion and that's because I'm trying to guide that solder either into the center of where the teardrop is or on the outside. And you're just gonna repeat this going around the entire, you know, surface edges of your shape. And, you know, sometimes I'll do it and I'm not really happy with the way it's stamped. So I just melt that again with the tip of the soldering iron. Just hold it on there for a moment and then press that rubber stamp on again. And, you know, you want to be careful that you don't burn yourself. You don't feel it really through the rubber stamp at all. You can use one that's on a wood block if you like. I buy rubber stamps. Oh gosh, I bought these 20 years ago by the sheet where you just, you know, you buy a whole sheet of different stamps and then you just cut them apart. And um, here I'm going to show you from a different view, more of a close up. And I usually work on a piece of newspaper. It does help, you know, collect some of that extra flux that comes off. But here I'm showing you so you can see better right on top of my wood um, soldering bench. So I'm going to do a circle shape now, and I'm again going to tin it. I coated the entire thing with flux, and I tinned the whole thing with solder, and I'm going to go around and put globs of solder around the edge. Now, these are maybe the size of uh, two grains of rice, half of a pea size maybe, um, little drops of solder, and, you know, if you need more, you can add more. And the rubber stamps I have that I'm using, I have a decorative design, and I have a kind of like a feather or a plume design. So any kind of, of uh, textured stamp, you know, you can experiment with what you have at home. You don't have to buy anything special if you have old red stamps that you're not using. Try them out. Um, this does not ruin those red stamps. You can clean them off. Sometimes a little bit of the solder gets stuck in some of the detailed edges of the stamp. And when it cools down, just use your you know, a finger or, or, you know, a piece of a paper towel or something or a little brush and just wipe those right out. And, you know, if you're going to use these rubber stamps for paper, again, you're going to want to clean them very well with a toothbrush and dish detergent, rinse well in water and dry. So what I'm doing is I'm going around, you can see where sometimes I have a glob where I'm not happy with it, and I just reheat it. And I do it again. Now, this is a project from my first book, Boho Chic Jewelry. Uh, I've started doing this technique when I was a stained glass artist, years before I made jewelry. And I was in a competition with Warner Crivellero stained glass called Battlefield Glass. And it was this really cool glass art competition. And I was in the first annual one. And I think it was probably 25 or so years ago. <laughs> and um, anyway... Getting back to our project, you're just going to continue working around your shape, putting down globs of solder, making them hot with the tip of your soldering iron, and then pressing the stamp. And like I said, if you get one that you're not too crazy how it turned out, you just melt it and press it again. And when you're all finished, you have a really nice decorative texture. Now, um, depending on what kind of stamp you use, this one is kind of a linear, it's like a, a feather, like I said, a plume. And it's more of a linear type of stamp. And you'll see in the end that it, it's a really pretty design. And there's a close up. Now the reverse side is flat. Um, you can see the wire a little bit on the reverse side and you'll see that better in another uh, shot that I'll show you coming up soon. So what we're going to do is I put them in a little container with some water and you can put some baking soda in there to neutralize the flux or a couple of squirts of like simple green. And I'm going to use an old fingernail brush and I'm going to scrub these up. And what you're going to do is you want to remove all that acid flux all of it. Uh, what I usually do is use this at my sink, but to show you for the video how I wash them, I'm just doing it right here. And you're going to scrub, like I said, just like when you flux them and solder them, you want to do all sides, inside, outside, front and back. And sometimes you get a little bit of the residue on there. You can just scrape that off with your fingernail. 
Once these are all washed up, you're going to rinse them in cool water, dry them off very well, and then we'll move on to our next step. And that's to check to make sure we don't have any sharp edges. So before we apply our patina, you're going to need something to sand down any little burrs or sharp edges. You can use a piece of sandpaper or you can just use a nail file. I like to use this um, acrylic nail file which has a you know a fine side and a coarse side they're like a dollar at the beauty supply store if you get one and use it for jewelry making then don't use it you know for your nails just keep it on your workbench only for jewelry and that works very well because it's small enough yet firm enough it can fit inside the center of your design and you can get into those little corners. So you're just gonna like gently run your fingertip around the edges, see if you have any sharp points, be careful, you know, you don't wanna poke yourself. And then you wanna gently file those off. And if you have one that's sticking out a bit more, you can just take your wire cutter and just snip it off as I did. So what you're going to do now is dust them all off. You may rinse them and dry them again and get ready to put our patina on. Now they need to be completely dry. I'm using an old plate that I only use for patina and I'm going to put a few drops on the plate and you can see that as soon as it touches that metal it starts to turn it black. The craft paintbrush I'm using the same. It is something that I only use for patina and you don't want to use it for painting or any other applications or any other chemicals. So you want to keep those, that plate and that brush, you know, to the side in a special spot where you're only using it for patina. And here I remember to put my gloves on <laughs> because you do need to flip them over and you don't want to, you know, do it without wearing some kind of plastic protective glove. And it's always smart to wear safety glasses and when you're soldering you know you also need to work in a well ventilated area just as when you're working with chemicals such as this patina so yes you know you should have safety glasses you should have gloves you should work in a well ventilated area and if you don't have a small fire extinguisher in your workshop you should get one they're really inexpensive and you can get them at virtually any home goods store or hardware store so here I'm making sure that the patina is in every little crevice. I'm going to flip some of them over. And it seems that the bottom that sits in that patina the longest gets the darkest. So we want to sometimes flip them over. And then when I feel that they are all dark enough, I'm going to set them on a clean folded paper towel. And you don't want to scrub the patina off. You just want to let it kind of sit on there. Some people let it just dry. So I'll let them sit there for a moment or two while I clean up my plate. Uh, with a paper towel or tissue you're going to want to wipe that all up very well throw it away and then you can wash your plate and your paintbrush in warm soapy water and then rinse um, so i'm going to blot these off because you know there's some patina sitting in some of the crevices in the design and you know you want to make sure that that patina is you know very dark i use novocan black patina by the way uh, it says for lead solder on the package but you can obviously use it for lead free solder next i take these pieces over to my sink and i rinse them off and dry them very well now we're going to move on to our next step which is buffing them down and getting rid of some of that black finish so you see the silver peeking through with just a little bit of that black. And I'm using the green um, scotch pad for this, which works very well. You can also use steel wool and you know try them both out, see which works best for you. Um, you can hold it and just rub it like I'm doing, or you can set it down and hold it with your finger and then rub it while it's like on your workbench. And you know, it, it just depends on what kind of a uh, finish you want whether you want it leave it darker maybe you want it bright or silver with just a little bit of that antique finish so you're just gonna rub them all around flip it over do the reverse side and here's that teardrop see how dark that patina is well once we start scrubbing it we're going to remove some of that black patina and you'll see that silver solder peeking through and there's the reverse side and there's the front and here's what this piece looks like after I've completely buffed it. Now, the next step we're gonna do, yes, we have another step, is we're going to polish them up. And here I'm using stained glass finishing compound, which is basically carnauba wax. And you're gonna use a soft cloth, and you're just gonna put a little bit of that on there, and you're gonna just wipe it onto the metal. 
and then you're going to use a different part of the cloth to buff off the polish. And here you can see I'm holding it on my workbench. It's working easier for me doing it that way. Like I always say, try out different techniques and find out what works best for you. Now this piece is finished. Isn't it pretty? Now here I am finishing up the rest of them. I do like to work in batches. I like to make multiples at one time and you can get a lot done that way. So I'm polishing all these up and then they're ready to turn into jewelry. There's so many different things you can do with these. Now imagine the different shapes. You don't have to give them a black patina. You can give them a copper colored patina. I show how to do that in another video. Um, and here they are. Uh, I have another video coming up where I'm going to show you how you can turn these into jewelry and some other really cool techniques that you can do with these. So if you haven't already subscribed, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Check down below for a list of all the materials and I'll put all of my links down below so you can join me on Etsy and on Facebook and on Pinterest and on Instagram, wherever you like. And check out these other ones that I made. Here's the ones that we finished today. And those are just waiting to be turned into beautiful jewelry. I think they just are stunning. They have kind of a Baroque look. They're so ornate and, you know, they're so simple and easy to make, but still just beautiful. Now, here are some that I made that are a lot larger. They're more like little picture frames. And, you know, here are the different shapes. I have a rectangular one, a square, a circle, an oval, and they're all beautiful. So if you haven't already, make sure you check out my books, Boho Chic Jewelry and Soldered Alchemy, which is a little bit more advanced soldering. You do learn the basics in Boho Chic Jewelry, and there's a shot of my DVDs and books. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and be sure to check back for my newest jewelry videos. Next time I'm going to show you some really cool things that you can do with these.